this is a review of a set of cells that we bought recently from uh, China from a company whose name I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce and I'm not exactly sure what they're called so uh, check down below to see exactly who they are. We um, traditionally we prefer to buy Winston cells uh, which are very well known very high quality we decided we would try another supplier just to see how it goes and uh, the one thing that we really wanted to know was um, how close to capacity the cells would be. In, in our experience testing Winston cells, <clears throat> they're generally uh, higher than their stated capacity. So we'll see how these have been. So this is how the cells came. They came in this big cardboard box, padded box, uh, full of tape. Um, Pretty good, one, one gash in it over here. Uh, so this is a good test to see how the cells would have been inside. Uh, inside, it had uh, pretty good padding. As you can see, there were places for six cells. Uh, we only had four. Um, very good padding. It also had some padding on top here. And when we pulled the cells out, they were absolutely fine. So no bulges, no dents, no scratches. They actually looked pristine really good back to the, um, the cells so we we had, they rated at 300 amp hours uh, we had originally wanted to buy 280 amp hours but they made it clear that they had none in stock and that they did have 300 amp hours for a slightly higher price so we went for those um, we top balanced them to 3.65 volts by connecting them in parallel that took a long time because as you could imagine they arrive at around about 30% uh, state of uh, charge so roughly 3.29 volts so to uh, bring them up to 3.65 volts each uh, took the better part of several days uh, you're talking about about 20 hours per cell and multiply that by four uh, it gives you about 80 hours that they needed to be on the charger to bring them up to the same voltage a process called top balancing we then uh, and, and we did that with the battery uh, in its uh, compressed enclosure we wanted to avoid the swelling that happens naturally when these things uh, reach their full state of charge uh, right from the start so these have never been charged without their enclosure uh, in theory that would mean that they are going to last about a thousand cycles more than they would have uh, the fact that they are in this slightly compressed enclosure uh, which stops them from expanding and contracting and, and moving about thereby causing stress on the terminals and more importantly delaminating of the uh, terminals inside there. Now the um, as I said they were rated at 300 amp hours so we first uh, after top balancing and uh, then connecting them in series with the battery management system the DALI 200 amp DALI uh, we then did three capacity tests uh, two low current running at 15 amps and then a much higher current running at 160 amps the low current or the low C capacity test was done with this tester which uh, goes to a maximum of 185 watts uh, which translates roughly to about 14 amps as the voltage decreases as the batteries are used up obviously the the amperage changes slightly and so uh, we would uh, keep an eye on that and, and keep it close to its maximum of 185 amps of, of 185 watts and that uh, gave us two tests of approximately 285 amp hours so roughly 5% uh, short of the 300 amp hours stated and actually much closer to a 280 amp hour um, battery so instead of a 280 uh, 285 well actually it's stated at 300 so it should have been 300 we then we did a, a high capacity test using a shunt a smart shunt and uh, that came out remarkably similarly to the uh, low capacity tester so roughly 
285 uh, amp hours. I think about 284 uh, amp hours. <clears throat> so all three tests therefore uh, showed that this battery was not up to the stated capacity. Interestingly, we uh, got onto some forums and, and asked around and just to get people's opinion. Uh, and uh, it, it re opinions range from it's still a good deal to actually you should send them back because they've lied to you. They're not to capacity. We contacted the supplier and we um, stated that we had uh, a problem with the capacity and um, the supplier uh, I think wanted us to measure each individual cell to see if there was one single cell that was causing the problem. In fact we knew that uh, cell number three uh, would reach a, a lower voltage and, and the, the BMS would cut off uh, when it, this one reached uh, 2.5 volts. The remaining cells were generally around about 2.8 volts. So um, the thinking was that uh, a single cell is causing the problem, so it's dragging everything else down. So we disconnected all of the bus bars, took everything off this, and measured each cell in turn. And the cells ranged from 282 amp hours for cell number three to uh, 287 amp hours for cell number one. So lowest 282, highest 287. So still nowhere near the 300 amp hours stated. And uh, so for this reason, we would not recommend that uh, you'd buy these batteries or these cells rather, uh, simply because we actually asked the supplier, we, we said quite early on in the process, exactly what is their capacity? Can you send us data sheets? Can you send us the, uh, the stats of how many uh, cells out of 100 will meet the capacity versus those that don't? And the fairly blunt reply that we received back was they are 300 amp hour cells. So fine, we tested them to see if they're 300 amp hour. They're not, they're actually more likely 280 amp hour cells. The, um, the fact that uh, none of them uh, met the capacity when we tested individual cells means that these, these really should not be sold as 300 amp hour cells. So therefore, uh, we'd still say that they're an okay deal. They cost about uh, $600. Uh, and so that it's not a bad deal, but it, it is not the stated capacity. And if you're selling something as 300, it should meet 300, not be approximately within 5% of 300. That's our opinion. On many of the forums and uh, our experience has been that uh, good quality cells have a QR code. That is the serial number of the cell. It's more than just a serial number. There's more additional information that you can get. If you have a look at these cells, you will see all they have is the nominal voltage with uh, 300 amp hours. This is our own label that we've put on and they have made in China. That's it, They're made in China, 3.2 volts at 300 amp hours. That is it, there's no QR code. There's no identifier for an individual cell. I mean, in a year's time, we could come back to the supplier and, and say, well, we've got a cell that we bought from you that's rubbish and there's no identifier on here at all. Uh, and that, in the early stages of testing these cells, uh, raised quite a number of alarms. We, we weren't happy with that. So these cells uh, come with a uh, M6 or a six millimeter thread, a hole on the terminals. Um, they are really shallow and they, they are manufactured, I think by Eve. We actually don't know who the manufacturer is, uh, but we know that Eve um, manufactured many, many cells that had uh, these kind of threads. So a, a M6 uh, hole that is about eight millimeters deep, that's not an awful lot of thread. That's actually a fairly shallow thread in very soft aluminium. Uh, we've actually tested eight of these cells. We've shown you four here, but we, we actually had eight delivered and we're testing the others. And uh, very early on on the other one, with quite a light torque, we actually stripped one of these out completely and had to put helicoils in. So 
not that happy with them, but we can't hit the, the, the particular seller because we know that Eve has sent uh, many, many thousands of these sort of cells out like this. We found that putting a grub screw, so this is an M6 uh, grub screw, it's a 25 millimeter long grub screw. Uh, the top takes an Allen key so you can keep it secure while you're turning the bolt down. This is, we found, is, is the best way of doing it. So for one thing on these, you can see we, we tighten, the bus bar is connecting to the uh, aluminium terminal and we've cleaned the bus bar out, made sure it's absolutely level. We then have a stainless steel washer on top of that and that we, we bolt that down. So minimum of things in between. We know that uh, stainless steel has a lot higher resistance than copper. So that's fine. We have copper connecting with the aluminium terminal and then the stainless steel washer on that, a stainless steel nut. Then we put the balance cable on and tighten that down with another cable. That has proven to be really, really good. Uh, beneath the bus bar, between the bus bar and the terminal, we also have some paste, um, very thin layer just to stop corrosion. Uh, we don't believe that the paste actually helps with uh, connectivity or, or conductivity rather. Uh, we think it just stops uh, corrosion. You've got to have a really good level bus bar and a clean terminal and nip it down to about four newton meters. More than that and you will you'll pull these out. Thank you.